Good Thursday afternoon. It is September 21st. We're about 30 hours out now from when the initial contact or landfall in southeastern Puerto Rico. And now it's back out over open water, restrengthened a bit after encountering the higher terrain of the eastern part of Puerto Rico. Technically, usually when that happens, we see about a 24 hour time frame before it kind of regains its strength. A little bit ahead of schedule there with a very well defined eye at a current time earlier on. Now you look at the last couple frames and it's starting to kind of fill in a little bit. We're starting to see a little more cloudiness in that normally clear center. Earlier we had some very uh, concentric thunderstorm activity all the way around that uh, eye very well defined and at one point it was actually 52 miles wide. That's a huge eye there and there is it is. It's all about perspective though with weather. If we were to take that eye and then place it up over the mid Atlantic that 52 mile wide eye, it would encompass parts of Hampton Roads here from Williamsburg all the way down to Virginia Beach. So if you were technically or theoretically traveling here on I-64, you went through the city of Norfolk, hopped on 264 to head to Virginia Beach, and there was a massive hurricane happening, you would be seeing sunny, clear skies, light winds. But the second you hit that eye wall, you encounter some of the strongest winds in a hurricane. So that's just some perspective there. 52 mile wide eye wall just this morning. All right, also that weakening can be attributed to the other hurricanes that we've seen this year. That's something about a very active season. There's always going to be some sort of remnant atmospheric memory of that past storm. In fact, right now, Maria is encountering the leftover wake from Hurricane Irma about two weeks ago already. Can you imagine that? So the waters there along that track are noticeably cooler. You see the brighter shades of red here indicating the slightly cooler temperatures down to 79, 80. Typically you need water temperatures of 80 degrees or warmer to sustain tropical growth. So right now it's encountering that slightly cooler water, but notice what's lying just to the north of that area where it is forecast to track warmer waters, 84, 85 degrees. So that heat energy will be replaced and that heat engine will start cranking and likely some strengthening possible. Damage is already done now down in Puerto Rico. We have the power outages 100% of the island without power. 3.4 million people live in Puerto Rico and some astonishing rainfall totals as this storm made landfall. In fact, rain still falling in those areas. I mean, look at some of these numbers here. These are 24 hour totals. 36 inches, three feet of rain in 24 hours. Some more perspective on that. When Hurricane Harvey hit Houston, they picked up about 32 inches or so over three days. And look at the type of disastrous flooding that happened there. We're talking three feet of rain in 24 hours with more on the way. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Really a dire situation there without the electricity, no way to communicate out to the outside world and uh, just a lot of issues going on there right now with that continued rainfall and flooding as well as mudslides. All right, we go about 1200 miles to the north now and we still have Jose. In fact, it's been around a named storm for 16 days now. The eighth longest named storm on record, at least in the satellite era, and that's from 1966 onwards. Now you may ask, well, what was the longest named storm? That was Hurricane John back in 1994. This is the longest in satellite era. So since 1966, it traveled. Look at how long this thing was around for. It's 31 days long, by the way, traveled a path of 7,100 miles. In fact, it started out as a hurricane because it was in the Eastern Pacific, and then it moved into the Western Pacific, which at that point, they kind of get a name of a typhoon rather than a hurricane. Same system, but just a different name for it. It was eventually ended up, it was born as a hurricane, died as a typhoon, 31 days. Pretty cool stuff there, 1994. All right, here's where Maria is headed, a Category 3 storm still. Again, some slight weakening there likely before it restrengthens and uh, moves farther north. And uh, eventually some slow weakening occurring due to the fact that it's going to encounter the wake from a second system. Remember earlier we were talking about Irma, how it's encountering that wake from that system there now. Well, it's going to eventually encounter the wake from the track of Jose, which had this very similar track. Cooler waters there mean some weakening, some slow weakening down to a category one and beyond that cone of uncertainty issued by the National Hurricane Center. These are the areas that will most likely see it track beyond that time frame here with the interaction of Jose to the north that will deflect it with something called the Fujiwara effect by early next week. How are the models thinking things really kind of end up here? Well, here's one 
the GFS Ensemble, one model that's run 20 separate times with different initializations. A pretty good consensus here up through about Monday. And then it gets to a point where it's pretty much parallel with Bermuda and it says, you know, there's a storm to our north here. Jose, I mean, how do we interact with that? This isn't a situation we normally see happen. So there is some deviation from that average there. So that's where that uncertainty still lies way, way out in the forecast period. How about the other tropical models? Again, that very good consensus here, kind of all coupled around each other. And then they get to that same point where they're trying, trying to have an, a hard time of coming to a solution of how they handle Jose. And if Jose is strong enough still at that point to have any bearing. So here's the two separate steering scenarios we're looking at here. What's been driving Maria's growth and eventual track off to the west for the whole lifetime pretty much has been a big ridge of high pressure over the Atlantic. The Bermuda High, the Azores High drives it to the west. Now what may happen, that blocking area of high pressure may continue and hold. If that was to happen, there would likely not be that much of an issue with Jose. Jose would drift east and weaken, but it would start to threaten the U.S. East Coast if this scenario were to play out. Now, if that area of high pressure was to lose out, it gives way here, opens up an opening, and it interacts with Jose. Jose lingers or even drifts a little bit south. We see that Fujiwara interaction and a deflection likely out to sea would occur. This scenario looking the most likely right now. Things may change. We'll have another update tomorrow and through the upcoming weekend to talk about the storm and any new developments there. But for now, you can find me on social media if you have any uh, questions or anything like that. Facebook meteorologist Tim Pandagis. Also on Twitter, 13 Tim Pandagis. Have a good afternoon.